This is the Guide to Georgia Outdoors. It's uh, January 16th, I would say about 4.30 in the afternoon, and we just got set up in one of my deer stands. But the last week of deer season, we had the hogs move into the property, and they are taking over. Most of the uh, action from my cameras is showing the hogs at night, but they're getting more and more comfortable. I'm eating 50 pounds of corn every night, so we're prepared to hunt them this afternoon and even after dark a little bit if that's uh, necessary. I got the Savage 243. I think I'm shooting about a 90 grain ballistic tip um, paired up with the ATN XI LTV, uh, LTZ if necessary. Tracking. I got the old uh, Smith & Wesson 40 cal. And finally, this is my uh, my last <laughs> my last measure of self-defense if needed is my uh, outdoor edge lip duck knife. If I get to this point where I'm eating this, I'm going to be in trouble, but this is a handy knife. I keep it on my belt at all times. Been up all morning duck hunting, so I might even close my eyes for a few minutes, and we're going to see what we can do. All right, let me kind of rehash what happened. Right at dark, I had four pigs in. I'm assuming it was four, I can't really remember. I picked out one, shot it, dropped it. The other one's running. I shot at one, not sure if I hit it or not. I just kind of threw out a Hail Mary shot. Got my gear together. I get out the box and I get about halfway to the hog. I'm doing my, my interview. I'm not sure if my other GoPro was working, but I'm doing the other, you know, like the recovery type interview. And I look up. And I see two more pigs standing right there by the one that I killed. And uh, that's why I was mentioning I'm going to bring my pistol. And uh, sure enough, they were there. While I'm sitting here with the lights on, talking and everything, I backed up, got in the deer stand, shot at another one. I think I hit it, but it kind of ran off. So I've shot at three pigs. And so we're going to see what we can find. I do have my pistol in my pocket just in case. And it will be loaded and be in my hand. So these pigs don't seem to be too scared. So we're going to see what we can see. Well, it looks like I uh, missed more than I killed. Killed this first one, the first the second one was running. Just threw out a Hail Mary shot. The, uh, I was about halfway down here, then my other two came back out, and man, I was over there having a pistol in hand, and another one was coming back. So it was crazy for a few minutes. Maybe at the end of the day, I was effective at getting the hogs off my farm, but I got one really nice looking sow. She's gonna be uh, good good eating. She's about the perfect size that you'd want. She's not been wallowing around in the mud. She don't smell bad. So uh, 
I brought in the big guns, brought my dad. We're gonna go back and uh, take it to the house and get it cleaned up. You couldn't really ask for more. Got one, I think I might have got the other one scared pretty good to keep coming, keep them from coming back. All right, we just got back to the skin rack and uh, I'm guessing this hog to weigh about 100, 125 pounds. Perfect meat size hog. Um, we're gonna clean it out whole. We're gonna leave it as a whole pig. We're gonna pull the skin off of it and uh, we might cook it whole one time this weekend. I got some buddies coming up uh, later on. And uh, you know, as we were tracking this, uh, the hogs that I missed, we got a lot more hogs in there than we originally thought. There's a lot of wallowing, there's a lot of crap everywhere. So we got a hog problem we're gonna have to address in the next couple of uh, couple of weeks, but it kind of makes it interesting, gives us something to do in this downtime before turkey season comes in. But uh, we're gonna clean this thing. Hogs are a little bit more difficult to clean than a deer, but they're not hard. Um, their cape doesn't come off, like just pulls off like a, uh, like a deer does. So you just gotta work it down. And once again, the outdoor edge knife comes in handy with this one. Um, I've been saying that a lot in the videos because I use it a lot. So hog hair is really coarse and it will dull your blade up real quick. Like, so we just like to run right there. You can hear that hair just ripping. This female's never been bred. As far as meat hogs go, couldn't ask for much more than that. If you look right there, you see the thickness of their skin. It is a lot thicker than a, uh, than a deer. I got a bunch of guys coming up Saturday. We could cook it for lunch. And that is a finished product ready for the smoker. We've already got it uh, trimmed up. We still got some fat on there. We want to use some fat when you're cooking it. And uh, got the legs cut off, everything ready to go. We're going to let it age in the cooler for several days. Then the next time you see this video, we will be putting it on the smoker. All right, it is early Saturday morning, about 5.30 in the morning. I got Drew here. Drew is a meat specialist. They call him the meat doctor. But uh, we got our pig that we killed a few days ago, and we're going to put it on the smoker. And we're going to be doing some hunting today, some duck hunting, some rabbit hunting while this baby's just cooking low and slow. And hopefully we'll have it ready for lunch. The season we're actually going to be using is our whole farm hoot nanny from the Hunter Cattle Company, which happens to be pretty close to where he lives over there near Statesboro. But um, that's where it comes from. But we're going to get this thing seasoned up. We butterfly it open somewhat. We uh, split the ribs, got it open where it cooks pretty evenly. Um, we're going to keep it uh, seasoned. My dad's going to keep an eye on it while we're hunting. So we're going to season this baby up and get it on the smoker. But you got to have a little bit of a binding agent, and that's where our mustard comes into play. The mustard doesn't necessarily provide it the most flavor, but it's more like an adhesive for our season where it doesn't come off, and Drew is just coating it down. You can't really overdo it with mustard, and I really like the mustard. All right, now we got the mustard on there, and then you're going to give it a liberal coating of your season of choice. We like this whole farm hoot nanny from uh, Hunter Cattle Company. We just got back from a subpar duck hunt. We shot plenty of times a day, but they just uh, weren't cooperative. We we're in a big pond and they landed a little far out, but the pig's looking good. We've had it on the grill for what? Maybe two hours now? Two hours. Going on two hours. So we're gonna give it a flip and cook it the rest uh, on its backside, but uh, smelling good. And this pig actually has a lot of fat for a uh, for a wild pig. So uh, we're about to give her a flip a roo. Okay. Right, we're going let's way. go uh let's go let's fly it this way and flip back okay? you ready yep one two look mm -hmm. at that you got it bud there you go all right that looks really good the, the problem is you can't smell what we're smelling but that smells really good now it's going to be a low and slow we've been doing it around 250 uh, we're going to keep basing it down, seasoning it up, and uh, we're going to let it cook for probably five, six, more five more hours. And then we're going to do some rabbit hunting and come back and we're doing a old fashioned pig picking. All right, it's one o'clock. We've had this uh, hog on the grill for about seven hours. We had a pretty uneventful duck hunt this morning and a somewhat eventful rabbit hunt. We'll uh, maybe include that in a future video. But now we have not opened this grill yet for the past several hours, so we're about to give it a look. Oh yes, somebody, 
We either have a rat, somebody did open, <laughs> or somebody has done. Somebody did up. open the gr uh, lid on that grill. Somebody's helped himself. But that is the money cut. That is the tenderloin. We're going to uh, we're going to do a picking, old fashioned picking. We're just going to start cutting and start slicing and start chopping. But uh, I think this thing's ready to go. Look right there. Oh my goodness! Look at that! Look at that! Take that little beast right there. What you think, man? Pretty good. We'll give it a taste test here. Oh yeah. You didn't bring any your dirt. We're gonna start doing some picking. Watch, watch this ham right here. This, this is how you know the ham is cooked perfect. Watch this. It just separates from the body right there. So we're gonna end up probably chopping some of that up as barbecue. Start picking on some of this. We got the shoulders. Hog ribs don't have a whole lot of meat to them, or wild hog ribs don't have a whole lot of meat to them. But right in there is the money cut. That is the tenderloin. The, that's the loin right there. The tenderloin's back there. That is the the pork chop. That is money. Cut. All right, we are. Me and Drew are picking this hog, and we're gonna save some of it. But look right here. This lets you know this is cooked perfection. This is right here under the shoulder, and look at that right there. I mean, just fall apart. Puff Boy, of steam. Oh, a puff of steam. That is. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> oh my goodness. That right there. Wild game might even be better than something you could buy from the store. That is so stinking good right there. That's good. <laughs> the rice right and loin only. Crispy stuff is good. That's a good sandwich. <clears throat> Tender. Mm. Tastes good. Get you a drag. You can kind of tell Papa Jay's. that it is a wild hog, but it's delicious. Hope you enjoyed this video. Really went from killing them out in the woods to cleaning them to aging them in the cooler to getting them on the grill this morning. So, like I said, hope you enjoyed that video. Hit the subscribe button until the next one. This has been the unofficial, no doubt, incomplete guide. George Outdoors.